Hey guys, Evan and Randy here. I've got a target set up at roughly 60 yards on the other side of this barrier that you can't see. And I wanted to show you something real quick. Uh, I was out here doing something else earlier and I realized there was a video that I needed to cover because I had someone out here not too long ago and I was explaining to him why you want to have your light mounted at 12 o'clock if possible. A lot of the high speed low drag light mounts that allow you to mount your light off to the side are a great idea because ergonomically they allow you to have your thumb right where you want it ideally placed and you're also not sacrificing that little bit of field of view at the 12 o'clock position that you're going to sometimes see when you're basically getting that hasty shot and like right here I can see my light out in front of me and it's covering enough space that at 40 yards in front of me someone could conceivably be hiding inside of that space you know taking a knee targeting me that I couldn't see. Remember guys the square range is a great place to launch rounds but the Actually, here's a great example. Paint, uh, paintball and airsoft people. You know what I'm under, you, you understand what I'm talking about. If, if you've got an, an environment where you have people everywhere, there is a great chance that someone could be hiding in your blind spot, whether it be your light at night or just your light mounted in your field of view during the daytime. But here's the big reason why you really want your light mounted at 12 o'clock. If you look right through this space right here, what you end up seeing when you look down there is that through this crack, this, this is essentially a knocked out block or brick or whatever. And it's difficult, if you've got to take a shot here, you know, I get a hit, right? The second I turn sideways, let's say that this is nighttime, and let's say that this is really, really narrow, okay? So now, these are actually touching one another. And let's say that my light is on an offset right here. To get my light on target, right now my light would be touching this. So now I have to rotate the light to get it on target. But guess what? Now my optic is staring at this. So my light is on target, but my optic isn't. Well, okay, so I roll back. Yeah, my optic is on target, but I can't see the bad guy. And guys, this is something that I've done repeatedly in training, and I've had a stack load of night training. And I would repeatedly hear guys say this in the training environment and I would go, I have that on video. But if I show it, I embarrass the student and kind of at a, at a tacit level, I embarrass the instructor because excellence comes from the teacher. So an excellent, excellence in the student comes from the teacher and also lack of performance in the student is also equated to the teacher. And I, so I can't show this. Guys, you don't realize how much stuff I've captured crystal clear, 1080p, 60 frames per second on these cameras. And I go, I can't show that because I'm gonna shame the student and I'm gonna shame the instructor. But there's a reason that all my guns pretty much look the same. Everything is on the same visual plane, 12 o'clock. I sacrifice, look, I sacrifice sight radius. I'd love to have this sight all the way out here. Most especially now as my eyes are aging and I need distance away from objects to see them clearly. But I can't. Why? Because I have to have my light here. And sure, I could have it at 6 o'clock, but that means that I would then have to add a rail segment to put the light on the bottom. But the problem is, this is an 11 and a half, and right there where my index finger is, you see my gas block. And barrels, see the movement? Barrels move. So what ends up happening is, I mount a light, uh, a rail segment there, but I have no understanding between boom, finished gun, and reality of using gun. Guys, I see this all the time in the training environment, which is why I'm standing in front of the camera and trying to tell you now so you don't learn these things when you come to training and your gun embarrasses you, but more than that, your lack of understanding and knowledge embarrasses you. And you pull the trigger, the barrel bounces, and then the barrel bounces again, and somewhere around mid-morning, your light mount starts getting loose. I've seen this. I've seen guys, when you do a night class, you usually begin at 1 p.m. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. Uh, if you have a three-day course, the first day is square range from beginning to end, and it's all daytime into the afternoon. By day two, you start going into like 1 p.m. to like 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. And by day two is when you start seeing things falling off people's guns, like literally, boop, things falling off people's guns into the dirt or into the gravel. And you'll hear people say, but that got a good rating. And I just stand there going, 
meh, biting my tongue going, shut up, Abner, shut up, Abner. Because when I hear people say, but that got a good rating. You mean a good rating where? In the magazine that pushed it? On the, on the, uh, on the website that pushed it? On the Tech to Cool YouTube channel where some high-speed shooty kid pushed that product at you? And pushed? Guys, people are pushing products at you. Look, there are better lights out there right now than the old school WML. These are the WMLs that were being made when I worked for Enforce. Uh, Enforce now has the Wild 2, which is the handgun light, which is phenomenal. I have one, but it's a bit of a brick on the end of the gun. And also, it doesn't sit flat on the pick rail the way I want it to, because in that environment back there, stuff will find its way between your Picatinny rail and your light, and it'll get jammed in there, and then you're fighting to break your light, uh, to break your gun loose from branches, and when you bring your gun up, guess what? You turn your light on, and all of a sudden, there's a leaf right in front of your light that you didn't see in the darkness until the last moment when you needed that gun, and you brought it up to take your shot, and you blast yourself in the face because a light and a little piece of a branch got stuck here, and it was flapping around in the darkness, so you never even knew it was there. Once again, I've seen it. And if it can be recreated, if it can be created in the training environment, it most certainly will be recreated in the combat environment. So for those of you who are just so tied up with the whole, what's your real world? My real world of experience is a crap ton of training. Go to my website, I'm very clear about this. My time in law enforcement is real. I learned so much more after law enforcement by being in the training environment and being around guys who had been in combat and who were teaching me brutal lessons of the things they learned in combat, and I listened. And that's why I'm sharing these things with you. So I'm telling you, if you don't have your light at, at 12 o'clock, you've got to take that long shot, and right here, I've got everything I need. This dude doesn't even know where I am until I decide to turn on my light to get a clearer picture of what I've got. And right here, those are headshots. In fact, that's the very tip of his head. so you can actually see it. I've got a very narrow space I'm working with. That's the tip of his head. That's the middle of his head. That's the lower portion of his head. And that's body. And that's working through a very narrow sliver. That dude would be hard pressed to know where those shots are coming from, most especially suppressed. Most especially in low light, if I didn't even have to turn on my light. What if I didn't even have to turn my light on on this? And I know that the argument here is the light, but what if I popped my light briefly for a moment to identify him, maybe when he was turned this way, and all he saw was a general, a general whack of light hitting him, and now I pretty much know where he is, and I just start popping him. Pop, 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 pop. He's down. Guys, there's a lot to think about here. And what amazes me is that I see people who want to argue until the cows come home about this kind of stuff because they want to argue for that gizmo or gadget that they got for a smoking deal or their favorite superstar instructor pushed at them. Remember, these people are being paid to push products at you. I'm not. I'm trying to push knowledge at you. Simple is best. Realize your potential. As always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns out in practice. Have a good one. Woo, that suppressor's getting hot.